What is happening guys and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing a little comparison between NordVPN and Surfshark. They're two of the top VPNs in the industry so I'm going to take a look at their similarities and their differences and see if one of them comes out on top. Now if you are looking at getting one of these VPNs it's well worth checking out the links down in the description below because that will take you to the latest possible price that they have on offer. So let's stop wasting any time, I'm going to jump straight onto the computer and we can see how they do. So on the left over here we have Nord and on the right we have Surfshark. Now before I connect to either of these VPNs I just wanted to run a speed test so that I can find out what my base internet speed is currently at. Now whichever VPN you use there will always be a slight drop in the speed compared to your base internet speed. So we can see that my broadband speed is currently running around 47 megabits per second. So what we're looking for now is how close we can get to that speed whilst using the VPNs. And obviously the closer the better. Now bear in mind that some VPNs, especially the cheaper ones, can drop your speeds up to about 50%. And this can often cause problems, especially when you're streaming content or you're downloading content on a regular basis and really need those speeds to remain high. And as you can see, Nord has come in at 46 megabits per second. That really is quite impressive. And of all the VPNs I've tested, that's definitely one of the best results I've seen. So we'll move on to Surfshark and we'll take a look at what happens here. But from my experience, I know that Surfshark isn't going to be able to quite match up to that of Nord. However, in most cases, Surfshark has never let me down when it comes to streaming content. So I still manage to get speeds quick enough for that. And that is the main thing that you're going to need a quick connection for. So unless you have a particularly slow internet speed to start with, both of these VPNs pass the speed test. As you can see, Surfshark has come in at 42 megabits per second. And although not as quick as Nord, as I've said, that is still very respectable. Okay, so now that we've run that speed test, I wanted to look at one of the main things that people use a VPN for these days, and that is to unblock Netflix libraries from other countries. Now, if we come up to Netflix from my home country and we search for the title Scooby-Doo, you'll see that it's not in the list anywhere because it's not being played in the UK. So to watch it, I need to use the VPN to connect to a server in the United States. Now, first of all, we'll try it with Nord. And as you can see, when you come back into Netflix and search for the title, there it is in the list. And I'm going to be able to play this with no issues whatsoever. Now, not all VPNs can do this, even though most of them claim that they can. But this is because Netflix are constantly cracking down on this, so they're always trying to find ways to stop it. However, Nord are always one step ahead and they always manage to get the job done. As you can see with Surfshark as well, they are also able to unblock this content, no problems whatsoever. And a third VPN which I found can also unblock Netflix flawlessly is ExpressVPN. There'll be a link down in the description below if you wanted to check out a review of that. And I think it's worth mentioning that occasionally if you do come into any problems whilst trying to connect to Netflix using one of these VPNs, the first thing that you should do is check the protocol settings. Some protocols are designed for speed and some protocols are designed for security. And if one of the protocols isn't working on Netflix, then you can simply switch to another one and that should sort out the issue. So when it comes to the amount of server locations used by these VPNs, we can see that Nord has 5,486 different servers, and that spans across 59 countries in total. As for Surfshark, they only have 3,200 servers, which is small in comparison, but this spans across 65 countries, which is slightly more than Nord, and if you want the full list of countries that these VPNs provide, check out the links below, and that'll take you directly to their website where you can find this data. In in terms of the general layout and usability of these VPNs, they're actually quite similar. So with Nord here, over on the left, we have the list of servers, but then we also have these options of speciality servers. So Onion over VPN makes use of the highly encrypted Onion network. So if you want to ensure that your data is fully encrypted at all times, that you can't be traced and that nobody can attack your personal data, this can be worth using. Below this, they also have a P2P server, and this can be used for any peer-to-peer -peer activity, including torrenting. Now, Surfshark doesn't actually have a P2P section, but all of their servers, 100% of them, can be used for P2P activity. 
So you can see in their menu they have a long list of all of their locations in one option and the next one is called static IP. Now these are all servers that every time you log on to them will give you the same IP address unlike some VPNs which will always issue a new IP address every single time. Next to that we have these multi hop servers and this will give you double the encryption. What it will do is it will route your connection through one server in one country and then onto another server in a second country before connecting online so that you have twice as much protection. Now as far as extra features go there's some things which both Nord and Surfshark have in common such as the kill switch and the use of split tunneling. But Surfshark has a couple of additional features which I think are definitely worth mentioning. The first of which is a built-in speed test. So with this you can literally measure the speed of every server on their system, find the one that's giving the fastest speeds for you, then you can save it to your favourite so you can access it later. And this next feature is something that I personally think Surfshark is worth paying for on its own. It's called Clean Web, and what it does is it blocks ads, trackers, and malware. So basically, it's performing some of the main tasks of an antivirus software, except it's built right into your VPN. So there we have it guys, and in a nutshell, NordVPN is the faster of the two. But all in all, they're fairly similar. When it comes to the amount of countries and server locations, they're quite closely matched there. They share features such as the kill switch and the split tunneling. But if you're wanting to make use of the highly encrypted Onion network, then you might want to look at using Nord because they have a server which connects to that. But on the other hand, Surfshark do have a couple of features which stand out. That would be the speed test and also the fact that they have that clean web feature. So when it comes down to which one I'd recommend, well, if you need a VPN to be super fast, if your internet connection isn't already that great, then Nord is definitely the one I'd go for. If you're not too worried about the speed, then they are quite closely matched, and I'd be tempted to go with Surfshark because of that clean web feature. And not only that, Surfshark does tend to be cheaper. Now I say that it tends to be cheaper because that's not always the case. It can depend on which deals or discounts you can find. So what I've done is I've stuck a couple of links down in the description below and that will take you to the latest possible price for both of these products so you can take a look at that if price is going to be one of the deciding factors for you. Now I hope this video has helped you to make a decision and if it has I'd appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss what I've got to come next and thank you very much for watching. As always stay safe online and I'll catch you on the next video.